very first mag through the brand new Ruger 5.7. Shooting this 5.7 by 28 round right here. It's kind of a weird round and honestly, I can't say I've ever shot it before. So I'm curious to see what all the hype's about. Let's check it out. One more for good measure. Thanks for tuning in. So we're out here today with a brand new Ruger 5.7. This was just released. I had a chance to check it out at SHOT Show and I finally got my hands on one to review. I went ahead and bought half a case, about 500 rounds of this Federal American Eagle 40 grain 5.7 by 28. All right, it's a very weird round, kind of unique. I've never shot it before until I picked up this gun. It's this little guy right here. All right, so it's kind of like a miniaturized 223-556, and from my understanding, back in the 80s, FN actually came out with this round for development for NATO to kind of bridge the gap between something like 9mm and 5.56, um, and they have... You know, it's it's kind of going in and out of popularity, but hopefully with the Ruger 5.7 coming out, as well as a bunch of other different 5.7 uh, platforms, we should be seeing this round hopefully go down in price because even this target ammo is about 40 cents a round. And if you want to get into the nicer stuff, you're looking at 50, 60 cents a round, almost 70 cents a round. Uh, but the good news is that with something like this coming out with the Ruger 5.7, we're looking at not just federal ramping up production, but from SHOT Show, I heard we have Hornady and Spear Gold Dot coming into the ring. So we're not just going to have Federal, we're not going to have just FN creating the ammunition now and manufacturing it, but we might have a few other players in the game. So, been testing this all day, about halfway through the case right now, about 250 rounds through her, and I can tell you right now, the first thing I noticed was the round is very low recoil very easy to get back on target even with a larger gun like this this gun is actually very light it's actually about 24 ounces uh, which is impressive because this thing is a beast in your hand um, it's kind of long which you know it's probably better for target acquisition a little bit lighter recoil easier to manage and the thing is the the cartridge is so long let me show you this real quick here the cartridge is so long that you need a slightly wider grip to fit it in a magazine. Of course, the magazines are these right here. They come in two mags, and I'll show you in a second what comes in the box, and we'll get a close-up on this handgun. But you get two mags, 20 rounders, and you know, they're just steel. Uh, they have like 5.7 by 28, little Ruger on there. Um, they kind of get scuffed up pretty easily. Uh, definitely oil them when you get in, and in fact, when you get this gun in, get it a good cleaning. It's got some gunk on the from the factory there, so I clean it up a little bit before taking her out. But mags are good, they work well, easy to change out. Um, so we got about another 250 rounds to go. I'm gonna do some accuracy testing, things like that. Uh, but one thing I do wanna note, when I first took this out of the box, the sights were way off. I'm talking seven yards, or about a foot and a half down, and like six inches to the left. So I went ahead and adjusted this right here. There's a little screw to kind of bring her up to get her at least with the elevation good. Uh, but the windage is still a little off, so I gotta shoot to the right a little bit. Um, I didn't wanna bother kind of taking a punch out yet. 
but that's something to note. So check your sights when you get this in. Um, let's go ahead and put a few more rounds through it and then we'll talk about what she comes in with the box here and then also kind of go a little bit closer on the pistol, do a little disassembly and takedown for you. So like I mentioned, the very first thing you'll notice is how wide this grip is and that is to accommodate for these rounds. Now the magazine itself is a little different to load than a typical handgun because this is almost more like a rifle caliber than even a handgun cartridge. So you'll see you actually want to probably just push it through like that, kind of like you would for an AR magazine. Uh, but you'll see it's kind of a little bit more difficult to kind of push down and in like you would for a typical pistol round. Um, but something else you'll notice is you want to be careful because these rounds are so awkward in this magazine that if they're kind of pushed forward like this, you want to make sure she's seated. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get that next round in there. All right, so I noticed that when you're loading this, the mags are a little finicky. Um, I'm sure they're gonna kind of loosen up a little bit over time. You'll get used to that. Um, but I have seen a few of them kind of get stuck there, kind of like that or something like that. You know, when you're loading and you push the other one in, it's hard to go in, or that tip is just barely touching that lip there and it won't go down all the way. But what I also notice about it is that it does feed very reliably. And you'll notice that there's marks 5, 10, 15, 20, and on the other side, 6, 11, and 16. So plenty of options to look at through the windows here on how many rounds you have. It is good to note when you get to 20, all you're going to see is a little flicker of brass there. If you go and have it where it's all the way with the brass in there, you can fit one more round in here, so make it 21, but it's going to be really stiff and probably not going to feed very well. So what you want to do is just have a little flicker there, and that's when you're at 20. You know, overall, it's not a bad feeling gun. It reminds me of some other Ruger handguns they have out now. Um, it has some nice grip texture there. And of course, in the hand, you'll see it's a little bit wide, but it fits okay, all right? Pretty easy slide to actuate there. All right, now, one thing I will know is, especially if you have smaller hands, not only is this handgun gonna be kind of tough to hold because of how wide that grip is, but this magazine release right here, all right, is kind of recessed in there. All right, so now the problem with that is, because it's such a wide grip, I can't quite get my thumb to hit it. You almost need like an extended mag release there just because how wide that grip is. So you kind of have to see yourself turning your thumb and breaking your grip just a little bit to grab that mag. And of course it does drop free. No real beveling there. Um, it's kind of just flat there. Uh, well, a little bit of bevel, like just a hair, but it has this weird little kind of lip here on the bottom. Um, so it's kind of different there in that aspect does not slam home when you run the mag hard into it. So that's good for the springs there. Uh, you know, you can either go and grab it up here to charge it. They do have forward serrations as well. Uh, and of course this little window cut up here, uh, but no ported barrel or anything like that. Check out that barrel though. I mean, it's almost closer to like a 223, a little 22 barrel. Um, but the actual slide release up here is pretty easy to actuate. It's not bad. And again, you kind of, have to break your grip just a little bit to get some leverage on it, um, but it's not too bad. There is a safety. They don't have any of the models without safeties right now, uh, but it's kind of like a 1911 safety and also everything is ambi on here um, except for the slide release. So you can actually flip the mag release button as well as use the safety that's already on the other side for your lefties over there. Um, but it's a nice positive safety. Nice clicks there. You're not gonna actually like just kind of accidentally hit it. So that's pretty good. Shooting her is pretty nice. All right, uh, I do notice there's no place for your fingers. I'm kind of used to the checkering on uh, where you can have like finger pad kind of memory spots there. Uh, there's absolutely no place for that on this handgun. And on this side right here, I find my thumb kind of searching for a flat spot because right now you have your takedown level, which I'll show you in a second, um, that's kind of in the way and you can kind of rest it on there, but then you're just touching the slide, which if you put too much pressure on there, you never know if you're gonna have a jam or something like that. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I'm shooting at a steel plate. It's the Evil Roy system at about, well, it's about 30 yards here, all right? So, Here's the deal with 5.7. All right, I talked to the guys over at shootsteel.com who make this Evil Roy. They suggest kind of treating this closer to a 5.56 round with steel. Um, 
That being said, it's definitely lighter hitting than 5.56, uh, but it's still screaming at I think like 1600 feet per second or something like that. So it's a good velocity. So they suggest like Evil Roy, 30 to 50 yards, kind of like a 5.56. About 100 yards, you probably want to shoot with this thing with uh, regular steel. So something to note, I haven't really heard many people talk about that before, uh, but it is a very fast round. Um, and it's part of the reason why it was under development for originally the P90 submachine gun and military and secret service use that still. By Ruger standards, this box is actually really, really nice. A uh, nice hard case, lockable. You have these little slide locks here to open her up. And you open her up, you got some padding up top here, just some egg crate stuff. And here is what you have here. You have kind of a custom molded plastic piece here. Um, and underneath that, I'll show you real quick, it's just some of the paperwork, some plastic wrap that the gun comes in, kind of typical stuff here. So your manual is under there as well. Um, but usually that stuff is on top. So of course you have your handgun, usually comes with one mag. In the actual handgun itself, there's a little chamber flag underneath there. To kind of have loaded in there when you first get it. Spare mag, very nice, 220 rounders, so that's good. Useless lock. And this is kind of unique, and I might save this for another video because I need to find the red dot that matches this or really kind of figure out how to install it as well. So I'll probably do an install and kind of a red dot review of just this handgun to kind of talk about this mounting system here. Uh, but I talked to the guys over at Ruger, and this is actually designed to go up top here where these two holes are. All right, and what that's gonna allow you to do is mount a red dot, micro red dot optic on top here. Um, it's not quite exactly cut for a red dot, it's more like a screw system, so they're kind of treating it more like a target pistol with a rail on top like that. So it's gonna be a little bit higher. I doubt it's gonna co-witness with those sights. So that's something to note. We'll probably save that for another review. So as for the handgun itself, we talked about a few of these already, but I'll go over real quick again. Mag release, a little bit short, kind of awkward. You can kind of see if you have a good grip on the handgun, it's gonna be kind of hard to reach, uh, but it's pretty easy to actuate if you just kind of adjust your grip just a little bit. 20 round mags, all right? You probably want to clean these up a little bit, get some oil on there, because it's kind of steel riding on steel, and it almost treat it like a, uh, an AR mag, honestly, um, with how it's designed. Slightly beveled mag well in there. All right, you got your safety. You can hear that, uh, it has a nice serrations on top so you could actually rest your thumb and actuate. So it's not too bad. Adjustable elevation and windage rear sight and adjustable windage front sight with a fiber optic piece in the front there. Uh, open window up top just to look cool. <laughs> no real uh, porting or anything like that. Uh, rounded off barrel here, kind of unique and I'll show you guys when we take it apart uh, what's kind of unique about that and kind of tricky honestly when you put it back together. All right, you got your slide release. All right, easy to actuate. Front serrations up here, nice and grippy. Real nice long front rail system. So you can go ahead and get yourself a big old Olight or something like that. Runner on there. Pretty easy to actuate. Uh, it's kind of a long rail, so if you put it pretty far up there, uh, you're not gonna be able to reach it. Um, that's kind of nice to have a rail on there, even though it is kind of long, but again, that's probably for the round to kind of get the max velocity out of her. So let's talk about the trigger real quick, okay? It's nothing special. It's a typical Ruger trigger. Um, this is a hammer-fired pistol, so a lot of the Rugers have that with a little hammer kind of recessed inside the slide. Um, go ahead and make sure it's loaded. All right, and it's kind of a semi-flat trigger. It's not too bad, not too curved or anything like that. A little finger safety here. All right, so if you let her all the way out, you'll see some take up, and you hit kind of a mushy wall. Very mushy. <laughs> Not a very clean break. Reset. A little bit far out there, but a little, still audible. It's doable. It really is. Again, it's a low recoiling round. So let's talk about takedown and disassembly of your Ruger 5.7. First things first sure she is unloaded. Go ahead and pull the slide all the way back and push up on your slide release to lock the slide. You're going to need a magazine and particularly the base plate because there's a push button right here that is very uncomfortable to push with your finger. Has a kind of a hole in the middle there. Go ahead and push the pin in like so with your base plate. Make sure you're not on a flat surface because this piece here will come straight out like that. It is captured. And then you're going to go ahead and pivot it down like that clockwise. Go ahead and release your slide slowly. 
and this just lifts off like so. You saw what I did there, how it's designed. Kind of hard to do with the right hand, there you go. How it's designed is it comes off like so, and it's gonna go on the same way. All right, so here's your frame. All right, there's a little hammer right there. Slide assembly, recoil spring captured right there, and your funky 5.5, five, <laughs> your funky 5.7 uh, by 28 barrel, kind of a little 22 kind of looking thing, but 5.7 by 28. I'm hoping they come out with some threaded barrel options. Uh, I asked the guys at Ruger and they said they cannot confirm, confirm nor deny suppressor ready models. So we'll see if that happens. Uh, but she's getting all dirtied up after a few in a round so far. Firing pin channel right there. We're gonna do a separate dedicated cleaning video. So stay tuned for that. All right, so now kind of a weird spot here to put this back together. So barrel goes back in like so, and you'll notice something weird that this can turn left and right quite a bit. It doesn't just lock in place like it normally does for any other handgun. So go ahead and put it as close to the middle as you can. Take your spring, little end goes in like this. Fat end goes against the barrel block right here. All right, and then line her up nice and straight as best you can. Again, that's kind of tricky there. And I'll show you something else that's tricky about this lever right here. Go ahead, you're gonna put it back the same way you took her off, back on nice and flat. Pull it back, lock the slide back. Now I find that you wanna push the barrel back like this, point it to the sky, and this lever will be nice and smooth because that barrel's gotta be all the way back for this level to turn. And once the lever is turned, you just push it back in, and you're back in business. She's fast. Easy to get back on target. I mean, you're still, you know, hitting good size. Target's quick acquisition. So at seven yards, I'm not like super impressed with the accuracy. Uh, maybe if we get the sights dialed in a little bit better, maybe if we get a red dot on there, we can kind of work on that uh, for the next review on the red dot. But you know, I mean, there's 10 rounds right there, kind of taking my time. There's another 10 rounds right there. Um, I had to adjust a little bit, and even when you adjust it, it's still kind of off. Let's try that again. I'm gonna see if I can kind of clean it up a little bit. All right, let's try it again. This time a little different. We got four diamonds on there, the smaller ones on the target about seven yards away. I'm gonna do five, 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 five. So 20 rounds out of this magazine. I am gonna wear gloves this time because I'm also wondering if Kind of how it's throwing the rounds a little bit to the left is also just because it's kind of a harder gun to really get a grip on, right? I mean, again, I was talking about how wide that grip is. So I'm gonna wear some gloves, kind of help with the cold as well as help with maybe getting a good grip on this and see how she does. So four sets of five. Still way down to the left there. But what's more concerning than the elevation and windage being off is just how wide those groups are. Cleaning up a little bit. Let's check it out. So, of course, aiming right here, you're hitting right there. There's four, and it's probably one flyer off the paper, actually. Um, again, maybe a red dot will help with that, as well as me actually getting a chance to uh, get a punch out to adjust. All right, it's a little bit harder to do with a handgun. You really have to kind of drift those sights over. Um, so I'll have to do that later on. But this over here, this group actually wasn't too bad, but I'm still not happy with how spread out that is at seven yards. Uh, this is one of the better ones, one little flyer right there, but we're getting better. Uh, this one's actually pretty good. One, two, three, four, and it's probably like a five right here. So, I mean, that was actually a good three, three round group right there. Nice four round group right there. So it's decently accurate. It could be the handgun, could be the round, could be the fact that it is target ammunition, or I'm mean, thinking more likely it's just that wider grip. Um, but you can still get on paper, um, provided you get your sights lined up and sighted in. 
So typically I don't bench rest a handgun, it's not something I've done before. Typically the sights are more on out of the box. And I have a feeling it's partly due to my, to my shooting, as well as the, kind of the grip and how you hold it. Um, it is kind of wonky. Like I said, it kind of drifts in your hand a little bit too, the more I'm shooting it and kind of noticing um, with how wide that grip is. Um, so I want to kind of see how accurate the round can be, okay? So what I did was I put a, this little piece right here that I got off Amazon. It's a little kind of um, rest piece that screws right onto any old tripod. I'll drop a link down below in the description. I'll also drop links to this right here um, down in the comments if you guys are looking to pick these up. Right now a lot of them are on, are on pre-order, but they're starting to ship more and more. So let's do, let's do uh, five rounds dead center, nice and slow, on this little rest, just to kind of get a feel for not only where these sights really are, because I have a feeling the elevation is pretty good, it just might be the grip that's kind of driving it down um, when you're shooting it. Uh, see how accurate this round can be, and just kind of double check here, nice and slow. All right, five more rounds again, nice and slow. I marked that first five round group on there. This time I'm trying to get a better grip on the handgun itself. Check it out. All right, so here's what we got. You got one, two, three, four, five from the first one with the lines through. Again, still not great. So now I took my time a little bit more on the second five here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you got one flyer and a really tight four round group right there. I mean, shooting fast at 10 yards, one, two, three, one, two, three. Not too bad. Mag changes are a little clunky with how wide these are, and I have a feeling mag carriers are gonna be kind of hard to find. I mean, same with holsters. They're out there, and I'm sure there'll be more and more as this gun gets bought up more and more, a little bit more popular. Same with the round, getting more popular. Um, but that little bit of beveling does help. <laughs> Again, having to break your grip to get to that mag release is kind of annoying. Maybe there'll be some aftermarkets. And also there is like no stippling or any kind of texture on that mag button release there. But it's not too bad. And of course the mags themselves have little ledges on them. Again, no texture, but some ledges on there to strip out the mag if you have to. Man, that's hard to hear. I mean, it hits steel just fine at about uh, 30 yards or so, almost 40 yards, so it's not too bad. But I think this is where I'm gonna leave you guys because I only have one mag left and I'm gonna save that for a mag dump here. So what do I think about the Ruger 5.7? All right, so the mags, you can, still, you can start buying them now. I think they're about 40 to $50. Heads up there, 20 round mags. The gun itself, Again, available for pre-order right now, and there's a few sites that are kind of getting them in stock here and there, trickling in. They should be kind of readily available here pretty soon, but there's some long lists for uh, pre-orders, and I, even like my local gun shop had like 40 people on the list to get one of these. Um, but again, these are probably gonna be in like the 600, 650. So for a 5.7, half the price of the FN 5.7, which I've never shot before, <laughs> That's not bad. I mean, for a very unique round, it's a high velocity screaming round, low recoil, a little bit different, kind of uh, shrunken down, two, two, three, five, five, six. Uh, very unique, honestly, as you saw. Ammunition is gonna get more and more popular. I think it's gonna get more production as well. Right now, it's gonna be hard to find. I'm gonna be honest with you. I got a case off of, uh, what is it, sgammo.com, and they're already all sold out. So, with well, a half a case, 500 rounds, right? So. 
they should ramp up pretty soon. Like I said, I heard Spear, Gold Dot, and Hornady are starting to uh, kind of jump in the game as well. Maybe some self-defense rounds. That would be kind of cool. Um, something good, some critical defense or something. Um, that's kind of fun if you wanted to carry it. It's a bit big to carry, but again, you know, it's super lightweight. And for those of you who like that external safety or 1911 safety, nice and positive. It's a really fun gun to shoot. It is. Uh, accuracy is just okay. Um, and again, I think it has to really attribute to uh, your shooting style as well as kind of the, the weird kind of recoil it has, like a light recoil for a larger gun like this. Uh, but more importantly, I think it really has to do with that grip. It's really hard to get a good grip on there and that stippling is not great. Um, I think it's kind of like the new uh, LCP2, maybe a little bit even less grippy than that. So you may have to wrap this, okay, and then kind of get used to that wide grip. Uh, again, one of my biggest pet peeves here is going to be this mag release. Uh, it needs to be extended with some stippling on it. So aftermarket might pick up that. Trigger. It's all right. I mean, you might be able to find some aftermarkets here pretty soon. Sights are off. Um, stay tuned for the mounting of a red dot. I got to find the red dot for this one and uh, hopefully get that out for you guys. So I'll kind of get a red dot review for the Ruger 5.7 going. Probably do a cleaning review as well. Get this all polished up nice. Um, overall, I think it's a cool gun. I really do. I think the accuracy is just okay but it's definitely a lot of fun to shoot. And I asked the guys over at Ruger at SHOT Show what they thought about this gun when it came out and what their market is for this gun. And they actually said kind of like a home defense or maybe uh, something kind of tactical. I mean, you saw with that light on there, it's kind of cool. I like it, I think it's cool. Uh, links down below if you guys are interested. And uh, of course, you know, as always subscribe to the channel, like this video. If you have any questions at all about this handgun, hit them in the comments below. Like us over on Facebook for all the latest and greatest deals on the internet. Follow us over on Instagram, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Man, they fling those around like 20 yards back. <laughs> the shells just fly. <laughs>